So what are you guys? We're part of the Sportwood family. Hi guys, this is John from Sportwood. Now the corporate board just recently gave us permission to run an online course for ISEE. Uh, so we're going to do that and we're going to first start with the math ISEE portion. Okay? Uh, just to give you a feel for what the course is going to be like. Of course on the ISEE, especially in the math section, you basically have two components, right? Well you have two math sections. One is more about problem solving and then the other is about achievement or really content. Okay? But in both you can use strategy. And of course both also rely on content. So, so obviously we want to work a little bit on both. But um, just to give you a feel for what the strategy component's like, let's try a problem like this. Uh, so. so quantitative comparison. In quantitative comparison, they're going to ask you, uh, which is bigger, column A, column B, are they the same, or can you not tell? Okay? Uh, in this case, we'll say, The product of the three integers, where integers are basically 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. 0 and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, blah, 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 blah. Okay? So, integers again, just reminding you. These are positive guys all the way up, negative guys all the way down, and 0. Okay? So, okay, so what's the setup? The setup is um, the product of three consecutive integers is 504. Column A is the largest of the three guys. Again, they write this out properly, but we're going to shorthand it just to make this you know, easy. And for column B, we have 10. Okay? So how do you do this? So, and just a reminder in case you forgot, let me write this down here. Integers, of course, 1, 2, etc., on up, 0, and then negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, etc., on down. Okay, just all the positives, all the negatives, and 0. Okay. So um, what's one way to do this? One way is you could geek it out, and there's nothing wrong with that. You can sit there and say the first guy is called A. Since the next one is consecutive, it must be one bigger than A. And since the next one's consecutive, it should be A plus 2, right? So you'd have three guys, right? There's A, A plus 1, A plus 2. Three consecutive guys, and their product would be 504. You could do that. And you can try to solve for A. Once you solve for A, well, you want the largest of the three, so then you'd be trying to solve for A plus 2. Okay? That's a lot of work. Okay? And the equation, by the way, is going to be cubic, so that's a pain in the butt. So I wouldn't even try to go there. Okay? Instead, the strategy might be something like this. Work with something concrete, 10. Okay, because I'm going to compare it to 10. So if 10 were the largest of the three, then the other numbers would have to be what? 9 and 8, right? In which case, if 10 were the largest of three consecutive integers, then the product here would be 8 times 9 is 72, times 10, 720. Now it's super easy. Because now you're saying, well, if 10 were the biggest guy, it'd be 720. But our product is actually 504, which is way less than 720 which means the biggest guy over here has to be less than 10. Does everybody agree? So that means the right-hand side wins. Okay? Okay. Now if you wanted to be a little bit more formal about this, I guess just as a content thing, it wouldn't be bad to try to factor it. Though I still think what we did is much faster. Okay? You could try to factor this guy. Uh, it's not obvious to me how this factors, so I'm going to do like 2 and 2, 5, 2. I guess we could have factored 4 out too, but whatever. And then this is going to be 2 and uh, 1, 2, 6. And this is, uh, what is this? 6 and 2, 1. Okay, so this is going to come to copying these 2's down. 2, 2, 2. Oh, sorry, I'm on crack. 2, 2, 21. But 21 is 3 times 7. And 6, which is 2 times 3. Okay. Great. So that doesn't help me too much, but at least I know what this thing breaks down into. And I need three guys that are consecutive, right? Um, again, since seven, I mean, you can't break down seven anymore. I'm going to start with seven. And I'm going to guess it's either going to be like eight, seven, nine, or maybe uh, five, six, seven, or something like that. So I look over here, and you would play around with these numbers for a little bit. And we would get, for example, three times three is nine. So I'm going to guess this is eight, but two times two times two is eight. So I guess the sequence is 7, 8, 9. And the largest would be 9. And 9 would be less than 10. Okay? So a couple things. One is, you might not like this method. Because what you're doing is you're breaking down the factors and you're kind of eyeballing and guessing. Some of you might have broken it down a different way over here. And instead of bringing it all the way down, you might have been able to see that it's 7 times 8 times 9. There's nothing wrong with that. But you don't want to waste a lot of time. And do you guys agree? However you do this, it, it could easily be more time consuming than just working with what you know, right? Because they give you 10, and 10 were the largest, then it would be 10 times 9 times 8. And that would be 720. And it's clear that 720 is bigger than 504. So, so the, the biggest guy over here has to be bigger than the biggest guy on the left. Right? And I think that's a much better way to do it than doing something like this, 
or even worse, trying to solve that cubic equation. 